serial killers on serious and silliness once again with almost Dr. Maria Beagle, forensic psychologist. And today our topic is going to be the clown killer, John Wayne Gacy. Yes. So, so almost Dr. Maria Beagle, why don't you give us a little bit of his backstory? Uh, uh, when there was he born and whereabouts and so on and so forth. What's interesting is he's known as like the killer clown and any pictures you see, you look up of John Wayne Gacy. If you were to Google image John Wayne Gacy, um, it'll be him as a clown, which is, you know, if you were to read up on him, there isn't much clown activity he was involved mm -hmm. with. So it's interesting that that's like the chosen image of him. Um, I was saying to you earlier, I once watched a, a documentary on the ID channel and his sister's viewpoint. And like, no one had any idea that this man was so deranged and, and a serial killer. Like it was just like a complete shock when it all came out. So, but to go about, uh, you know, to talk about when he was younger. So um, he was born in 1942. Okay. He was uh, the only boy. He grew up with two sisters. Right. His mother was like his saving grace um, because his father was a drinker and used to just beat him and was just so appalled by his son, by John Wayne Gacy. Now, where, um, where, uh, where did he grow up? He grew up in, was it Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, Chicago, Illinois. Okay. He grew up in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. So um, his father just like hated him for some reason and abused him and whipped him and just and treated him so poorly. He loved his daughters, but hated Gacy for some yeah. reason. From and, what I, from what I understood, he, he didn't like him because, um, he wasn't a very athletic boy. He wasn't a, a boy's boy. He liked to do kind of other things that girls would like to do. Um, and his father hated that because yes. he really, he wanted, um, his father was a, a, was a bit of a rough dude and he wanted a son like him. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, Gacy was not like that. Gacy was not the image of a son, of what a son should be. And he was, he was a plumpy child. He was, you know, he was overweight. He, like you said, he wasn't athletic. Um, and his father just had these different aspirations and dreams for his son. And, and, and Gacy didn't fill any of those. So his father was very, um, very awful and tormented him, his own son. And like I said, treated his daughters very well um so ultimately when he would be beaten by his father he would go to his mother and his mother would com comfort him and console him and then he was he was made fun of even more he was told he was you know you're acting like a baby and you're acting like a wussy and you always go to mommy you're a mama's boy and that just totally just you know if it wasn't physical abuse it was verbal abuse he was suffering Mm -hmm. which is kind of like the trademark of serial killers. When we talk about serial killers, it's like, oh, there it is. There's the trauma. We yeah, but this, this time it's a little different because this time it's his father. Father, yes. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't the, mommy the, issues. It no, was daddy yeah, yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so as we, uh, you know, skip ahead. So he, it says he was the second child of uh, two other siblings he had. Um, he was close to his mother. He was close to his sisters. So it sounds like they just used to sit back and let the father do what he was doing. And then, you know, they would pick up the pieces and, and try to console him and help him. Um, and then, you know, uh, he actually dropped out of school or failed out one of those. Uh, he never finished high school, but later on he got interested and wanted to go to college and he was able to go to college and actually graduate. Uh, but his, um, he got very political early on. He, uh, he was a precinct captain for the Democratic Party. I have no idea what that means. Me neither. But... I've read the same thing. I have no clue what that means. I think so... it's a glamorous title for a volunteer, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he, like, uh, you know, managed, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, some shop that was, you, you know, election like, ballots a bunch of volunteers. Or he was a manager of volunteers. Yeah, right. right. It sounds like, yeah. So, um, yeah, so, and then his father didn't like that. His father didn't like that he was involved with the Democratic Party. So mm -hmm. that was even more abuse. And then they even talk about how uh, his father bought him a car. But Gacy had to continue the payments and pay dad. And anytime dad did not approve of something he did, the keys were taken. Yeah. And, and you know, Gacy wasn't able to obviously drive the car. And the father was a mechanic, right? 
Yeah, yeah. He he took the uh, what was it they said he took yeah, out? Yeah, G- Gacy made a separate pair of keys so they could yes. go anyway, and his father took a a piece of the of the engine out so he couldn't go. Like a converter <laughs> or something. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So later on, Gacy meets a woman and they get married. And this is his first wife. And his first wife's father sounds like a, a pretty well-to-do man. He owned three Kentucky Fried Children, uh, children, oh, not yet, <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant. Yeah. And made Gacy a manager of one, which, you know, they say in here that you know, at that time he was making 15000 per year in, in 1964. And now that's the equivalent to 115000 per year. That's not bad. That's no. pretty damn good. That's good money. He was doing pretty well. And if you read a lot of Gacy's history, you'll see that he was actually a hard worker. Like he he had many jobs, um, but he worked. He was a worker and he somehow was just always, always seems to bounce back. So, so um, things are going well. He's married. He, I believe he has two children or uh, I'm not sure, but I mean, he's making good money and I think he has two children. Yeah. And then what happens is he joins the JCs. Do you know what the JCs are? Because I wasn't sure what that was either. No, Uh, I have no idea. He joins this club. uh, It's called the local JC chapter. And um, he gets involved with it. Well, ultimately, here comes his first crime. He, uh, He assaulted a young boy. And what happened was he- uh, Keep talking, let's look it up. I'll look up what the JCs are. Okay. So apparently he lured this young child back to his, um, back to his place and offering alcohol and, and um, all this stuff and it even say, hey, we could watch porn together kind of thing. Wow. Yes. And ultimately he assaulted him. And then this, uh, this Donald Voorhees went back to his father and said, you know, John Wayne Gacy did this to me and assaulted me. So uh, they found this to be accurate, but I believe even before, while the arrest is going on and the conviction, did you read about how Gacy tried to bribe someone? Was that this? Yeah, he tried to bribe someone to um, assault Voorhees so Voorhees couldn't tell anyone. But ultimately that was found out. Yeah, okay, yes, yes, yes. Yes, Voorhees escaped from that assault And the person was caught and the person then ratted out John Wayne Gacy and said he paid me to try to assault him. So he couldn't, you know, he couldn't. Yeah. He gave him him $50. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. uh, JC Penny kept coming up. So we'll just skip it. Oh, all right. (laughs) It was J A Y C E E. That's what JC is. Yeah. I don't know. So anyway, um, I'll try it again. I'll try it again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. J A Y C E E. So then after, with all this evidence the police had against him, John Wayne Gacy actually pled guilty to one count of sodomy in relation to Voorhees. Uh, But um, I guess there were other youths involved with this and he pled not guilty to that. Ultimately, he was charged for the assault of Voorhees and uh, sentenced to, I believe, 10 years. And yeah, Yeah. he was sentenced to 10 years. Um, So ultimately his wife divorced him, took the kids and left. And he had never seen the kids again. He never saw his ex-wife and children again after that, after that whole thing. Yeah. Um, understandably so. I don't, uh, nothing came up on JC, oh, but okay. uh, uh, it might be something that no longer exists, but yeah, uh, underst- understandably so. But then, you know, every time we do something that happens in the 1960s and 70s and, or, or even before when they, when they get arrested for their first crime, yeah, it seems like they they seem to be able to get out without actually any kind of uh, yeah. So it, it you uh, know without any kind of like you know probation or yeah nothing. It's just like yeah, just go ahead, go, and then they lead to wind up because I feel like if today you went to jail for sodomizing a teenager. You'd have to do a hell of a lot more than 18 months, which is what he did. Yeah. Right? So he did, yeah, he did 12, um, I'm sorry, 18 months. Yeah, with 12 months probation. Yeah. 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 It just sounds, it sounds strange. I guess things were different back then. I guess it's like, 
Yeah, uh, he'll be fine. Go ahead, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he won't do this again. Yeah. He won't do it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, it, it wasn't a crime that they saw often. So how are we going to deal with a crime we don't see often? Let's, you know, okay, we'll yeah, that's probation true. and kind of thing. Well, that happened in, uh, um, uh, did that still happen in Illinois? But anyway, he returned yeah, he to was, Chicago. Okay, yeah. He, he was in Iowa when that happened. Iowa, okay. Yeah, then he yeah. returns to Chicago. Right. And um, so, uh, and then... I think he marries was, a second time, right? There was a second time he assaulted another boy, teenage boy. So, oh, I, okay, never mind. I'll get to it later. But it's interesting okay. when, you look at his, <laughs> when you look at his victims. As you go on, we'll talk about it. So, yes, a teenage boy he assaults again. He lured him into his car. But he gets and, remarried, doesn't he, when he moves to Chicago? Yeah, I believe that happens after. after oh, okay, this. okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, this whole assault happens again, and they didn't know about the, the you know, he's charged, and they didn't even know about his crime before. Mm-hmm. So, um, so his, yeah, his, his convictions were sealed, so they didn't even know about it. So I'm not even sure how much time he did for that assault, to be honest. It wasn't long. So who comes to his rescue? Now this man is free. Um, he's got a criminal background, but mom. Mom gives him some money. So he gets his own ranch house in uh, Norwich, um, a- in Chicago. He's still in Chicago. So now he has his own house. And then he meets his second wife. Oh, OK, OK. His second marriage, OK? So um, it was shortly after Gacy actually moved in with his mother. Oh, I'm sorry. Rewind. Dad died when he was in prison before. Oh, okay. I, I, that I didn't know. Okay. Cirrhosis of the liver. So we're assuming he was a heavy drinker. Yeah, that's right. That is not whole. Okay. So, so he asked to, um, when he was in prison, he had asked, you know, to be released for his father's funeral. He was denied. He was always, it always seems like he's, tr- he was trying to uh, get his father, have his father's acceptance. And yeah. there was something I read in here too, in which when he had his children, his father actually was there, you know, to visit his mom and dad. So their grandparents, his children, and his father actually apologized. This yeah. is according to Gacy. So yeah, according to of, Gacy, that was the only time his father told him he was proud of him. When he had yeah. His and I, we wonder how, I kind of wonder how true that is. Is that something he wanted to hear, you know, uh, or yeah, yeah, did it really happen? Right. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Could have been making it up, sure. So he, so Gacy meets another woman. Um, she has stepdaughters. They move into the home. They get married. And then he tells his wife, his second wife, by the way, I'm bisexual. Yeah. And during this whole, during this whole process, he's, he opened a construction company, didn't he? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, he like saved yes, he money opened. and opened a construction company. Yes. Talk yes. about, uh, yeah, this guy really couldn't hold a job. But it was always not because he didn't work hard. It was, he either got arrested. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly you know? what, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so he tells his second wife, I'm bisexual. And according to Gacy, the last oh. time he has sex with her is on Mother's Day. Okay. Basically, it sounds like a treat. Like, here it is, but this is it. Right. Kind of thing. And now we're starting to get into um, uh, more of his sexual sexuality deviant side. and the sexual deviance. And yes, yes. And then soon after, his, the second wife divorced him. Um, but, but during his, while well, he was married to his second wife, uh, didn't they have like swingers parties? And, it sounds like it. And it sounds like they did. And whatnot. His, his wife used to watch him bring teenage boys home and they used to watch gay porn together and look at gay yeah, porn together. That's even, and that's even, that makes it worse. So I guess she had her limits. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> she found it and was like, yeah, no peace. Um, yeah, no, this isn't for mm-hmm. me or my daughters. So yeah, unbelievable. She's gone. So then he establishes another part-time construction business um painting decorating maintenance that's what it says here so he's got that business he becomes a supervisor for then uh, a pe systems place like this he's always like winding up on top but like you said he fails you know something well they say he was somewhat charismatic because he he, yes uh, even when he was in when he was in prison uh because he worked for kfc he was able to he was like became head chef uh, of uh, um, you know the uh, cafeteria and the prison and whatnot, 
Yes. So uh, it seems because he's so charismatic, he's able to get the things he kind of wants. Um, unfortunately, yeah, he so was. He some was of those able things to sell were uh, teenage children, teenage boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, he then was earning a revenue, uh, annual revenue of over two hundred thousand dollars. He was like, he was good at sales. He was good. Yeah, at his he work. could make. He could make money. Yeah, definitely. So then he, <laughs> he, he. He comes out, has a membership of the Moose Club, and that's when he, this is the clown part of the whole story, is that then he starts to dress up as a clown, um, and uh, Pogo the Clown, and Patches the Clown, and he was a happy clown, he used to entertain at children's birthday parties, and sometimes mm -hmm. he didn't even ask for money, he would just do it. Right. So they, uh, you know, uh, psychologists and clinicians and all these people were, were later on speculating that he was, tr he was almost re um, reverting back to his own childhood by doing that. Oh, that makes to sense. Childhood, okay. To a happy childhood in which yeah. he wanted. Okay. And that makes sense. Sure. He used the whole clown thing. Uh, so then. Um, and also seeming like a fantastic person in the community at the same time. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So then he starts hiring younger kids to work for him. Herein lies the issue. He's, right. hiring, he's hiring teenage boys from high school to work for him and do side business. And then um, we're getting more and more into that deviant behavior, that maladaptive behavior. Um, uh, and then, you know, it just, it, there's so much with him. <laughs> um, one re reported that, uh, you know, one of the boys reported that he lured him and, and got a hotel, lured the boy in the room and raped him. And, and, um, and there were marks on Gacy cause he was fighting back and Gacy later on before the divorce actually told his wife, um, that he was attacked and all this stuff. So, um, then, you know, he hires a 15 year old boy, uh, and you know, it, you often use alcohol to lure these young boys and got him drunk off of wine. That is true. That yeah. is so true. Because I remember being in high school, waiting outside like a store or a supermarket or a deli, and we would ask an adult, "Can you buy beer for us?" Mm -hmm. And that it, that that would be the easiest way. And you probably don't have to buy much. No offense to young boys out there. No, it's the truth. It really my is. assumption is the tolerance is not that high. Yeah, so it's not yeah. going to take much. On top of which, you can get them so drunk they're they're not going to be able to fight back right 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 let alone or a lot remember. of times even remember what happened mm -hmm. that's why they're you know so f from what's on here research wise they have from 35 to or 33 to 45 victims but they're of the mindset there are so many more and Gacy yeah, that's hasn't right. admitted to it so I mean, now we can get... And, it, and it's a short span, too. It's like from 72 to 78. It's only six years. And they know of 33, and they think there's more. That's a tremendous amount. A lot of uh, uh, ident unidentified body, you know, body parts were found. Because when he started to really... When the murdering would start... When the murders, I'm sorry, would start, um, he used to hide the bodies in the basement. Sometimes it would be twice a night. Like, once wow. wasn't good enough. Twice... Wow. Um, yeah. So he, he was, he was in it to when he really had that, you know, he's later on, uh, uh, they, they definitely call him a psychopath. You know, there was no remorse involved. I mean, he was, he was in it for his own gain. And a lot of it was sexual maladaptive behaviors. Um, so, I mean, online it's saying 33 men and boys, you know, he admitted to killing. 26 of them were in the crawl space of his home. A lot of the stories are the same. He lured them. He always lured them into the home. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, later on, while cops are starting to catch on to him, they would investigate locals. And one said uh, he would buy lime, right? I think it's a lime for the yeah. smell. Lie, yeah. That's right. Or lie? Is it lie? Right. It's lie, yeah. Lie, lie, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, that would then pique their interest even more. Sure, sure, sure. And, and you know, um, when they say adults, you know, 18 is considered an adult. And so they're still young men, 18, 19, you know, it seems that's, that's his range from 16 to 19. So what's interesting is the bodies they do have, um, that they have recovered, 
were that of 17 to 21, I believe it was, oh, or 17 okay. to 21. Yeah, yeah. The ones that uh, he claims he had killed and you can't find the bodies, they're a bit older. So it's interesting that the bodies that remained in the crawl space were that of the younger. Ah, uh, okay. Which is yes. interesting to me. Um, I... I wouldn't doubt there was some necrophilia involved and none of, I don't see much of that involved. There was one story where he uh, worked at a mortuary. Mm. Yes. And he laid with a young boy's body and started to caress it. And it even, it got him a little worked up and freaked out. Probably yeah, that's when we should, the first time he left home when he, that was his job. And then he called mom was like, can you take me back? And he went yes, back. That's and, right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now, was it just killing or was he uh, getting the boys drunk and raping them and then killing them? It sounds like there were uh, there was there was torturous behavior. There was a lot of, I mean, there was, uh, if you look online, there was a story in which he, he s would sit on the chest and force the, his victim to perform oral on them. And he was a big man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So f for, first of all, for him to sit on someone's chest, that's, that's damage right there, you know, right, right. and then to force oral. So there was so definitely torture, rape and uh, murder. And, yes. And sodomy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was definitely deranged. Um, and, and his, his, uh, attraction were definitely males, younger males. I kind of wonder if, so there's so many things you can look at. Um, they talk about how he wanted to, um, regress into that childhood behaviors. So did he find himself more attracted to, to younger men because he himself con found himself to be of a younger man and that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or was it easier? Are young boys easier to lure back to the home and promise alcohol and cigars and porn and all this stuff? I could, just... I could completely agree with that. Yeah. Young, young, guy, young guys are very, young people in general are very uh, easily uh, manipulated. And I, I mean, I don't know the stature of these young boys too, but he was a bigger man. So if you wanted to overpower someone, my guess is the younger you went, the, you know, maybe yeah. they weren't fully developed into men and it was yeah, they were that teenage boys. They were probably athletic, you know, thin. Yeah. yeah I could, so I could totally see that. Now just backtracking for one second. Sure. Uh, um, when he put these 27 boys slash men in his crawl space basement, whatever you want to call it. Do you think that was more of like a trophy case for him? Because he said the older ones he would dispose of. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I wouldn't doubt it. Like I said, I kind of wonder if he, you know, like Jeffrey Dahmer used to keep his bodies. Right. And often uh, relive the fantasy and would rape mm -hmm. the bodies. Right. I, I, I don't necessarily see any, um, a uh, uh, confession of necrophilia from him, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt that he did what he, you know, he disposed of the bodies in his crawl space, but I wouldn't doubt that he often revisited them and may have used them for sexual pleasure again. I, I could, yeah. I mean, it's possible, but there's no, there's no, it doesn't look like there's any, he didn't admit to that. No, mm -mm, um, he did not. No. But it, it wouldn't surprise me if he, if he, if he did. Um, no, it, no, it would not. Absolutely. The so. only, the only thing that I, I, the only. But he yeah. seems, I think he's turned on by torturing. Yes. So that's what alive. I was going to say. You have to be alive to be tortured. Right. Right. So. Right. Right. And there's so many of them. Yeah. It's, you know, with, with, with what's with, uh, with Dahmer, he would kind of have his way with some, with the dead body for a week or so, or a few days, mm -hmm. and then would look for another victim. Yeah. He was kind of like, no, I need, I need life bait. I need, I need live victims. You know? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's almost like that, that switch went off and, you know, and like you said, it was a short amount of time in which he's doing all this. Right. And so many bodies and they, they do believe there are more that were never uh, confirmed that he was involved with or even recovered. So. I could com I could completely agree with that because seventy two to seventy eight if he if they found thirty three victims, yeah, and he was arrested twice and both times were for sodomy, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I could see totally from that time beforehand before he was arrested, there could have been uh, you know a victim or two or three that went unnoticed. Yeah. You know. And it it makes you know then it. it we talk about nature versus nurture sometimes and it makes you wonder, 
Did dad do the, dad, did dad do this? Did dad create a psychopath by the abuse he inflicted on him? Mm-hmm. Or was he born damaged and the abuse didn't help? And then eventually that switch went off and people suffered. Like it's, it's just a hard question to answer. And mm-hmm. I think they're still trying to figure that out to this day. I believe his brain was even... Yes. When he, yeah, he was he was put to death by a in lethal injection, which they screwed up, by the way. Did they really? I didn't know that. So what happened was um, the tube they used got clogged. It's not funny. It got clogged. Uh-huh. So they realized that oh, something's going wrong. So they shut the blinds. They got a cleaned out the tube or something and then reopened the blinds and injected him and he died. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. And he made but it all the way he, till 94, right? He didn't yes. die till 94. Yes. So he was on death row for like 14 years because his trial yeah. was in 80, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. That's right. So, and then uh, his, I believe his head was donated, his brain was donated to be studied or something. Wasn't yeah, that? And, yeah. And some scientists uh, opened his head and tried to study his brain, but they didn't see anything abnormal. No, they, yeah. they, they did diagnose him as either sociopath or psychopath, which are one, you know, they're, almost one in the same there's mm-hmm. slight differences between the, the two mm-hmm. of them but yeah so um it, it you know when they they said he did confess later on because they were on to him and all that and he did eventually con- confess but there still didn't seem much remorse oh did you did you see what his last words were <laughs> no what were his last words it's my ass that's what he said <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is no remorse whatsoever. I mean, if you're gonna go out, I guess. That's uh, yeah, he, he he really was the blue collar serial killer, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Definitely. So yeah, I mean, when he was investigated, they had surveillance all over him. They pretty much were sure this man was involved with these murders. They had a lot of people confessing to odd behaviors, and and when he'd buy the lie for the, you know, to, mm-hmm. you know, that was it. That was when they really. And then they got. Oh, I think that when the salesman or whoever it was that sold him that told that to the police, they got a search warrant and he wasn't there at the time, but they searched and they found the bodies. Wow, wow. And that was it. Then he was like, yeah, gig is up. <laughs> no, he wasn't a stupid man. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it would have to be, it, you know, with somebody like uh, when we looked at Ed Kemper, uh, he almost had to give himself up. Yeah. Because he was able to, uh, you know, always finagle his way out of it and so on and so forth. It seems like this person, his, seems like his thirst for uh, blood, if you will, completely overshadows any kind of reasonable behavior. Because it wasn't stupid. He had to know that he was going to get caught sooner or later. I think he, I almost think he was a bit of a narcissist too. Because if you think about it. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Sure. So, I mean, he's, he's the salesman. He's successful. He's always successful. Even though he's had several jobs, he's successful in all of his jobs. Right. And I think he just got too confident. It was like, no one's going to guess it's me. You know? yeah, it's a, it's a layup. Are you kidding? No, 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 no he, matter what I do, it's good. And, and it was a shock to family. It was a shock to a lot of people because he was a friendly, jovial kind right, of, right, 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 right. you know, he's a big plumpy guy and he's like a big teddy bear and yeah, dresses like a clown and yeah, 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 yeah. He even before my kids' birthday parties because he wanted to and he never charged anyone. And yeah, just, right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. There was this guy. There was this guy at work. Like you have to be a little touched to want to work in the sewer. And there was this guy at work. His, <laughs> his name was John, and he. There was nothing wrong with this guy. Like when I, you know, he could. He never cursed, and he, you know, he had his. He was married, and he had like the perfect marriage with a son that was. Uh, he was like on the uh, soccer team coach and so on and so forth. And he was a hard worker. And I used to say to him, John, you know what? You're at this, there's, there's skeletons in your closet. I wouldn't be surprised if we find bodies beneath your house. <laughs> because you are just too good of a person to be working here. Everybody else is, an, is a lunatic that works here. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't know. And now he's looking at you like, there's skeletons in this closet. Like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Um, but so, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, continue. No, 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 it's all right. I mean, later on, he confesses, he gets arrested. Uh, yeah, I think he was on death row. Yeah, so by the time he actually uh, uh, went through the trial, he became something of a uh, household name 
right? And um, people really did want to see him die. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Was, I think there were like over a thousand people outside of that prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they finally said that he was dead, they cheered and roared and whatnot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which, it's, it's you know, that always leads me to to uh, when you hear things like that. Um, obviously, listen, he didn't deserve to live. He was obviously uh, whether it was nature or nurture, he was obviously a terrible human being and didn't yeah. deserve to live. But when you see um, people enjoy somebody getting, uh, you know, killed, if you will, or uh, enjoy, you know, uh, severe justice like that. It, it, it kind of feeds back to that primitive nature of, of man liking seeing that, you know, you yeah. think of, I think you think about the gladiators and mm -hmm. the crowds that, that, that they drew and um, the crazy things that they did and they would have to fight tigers and bears and yeah. so on and so forth. So, um, cause it's, it seems odd. It's like, okay, I want to see this person die and this person took enjoyment in killing others and now you're taking enjoyment in killing him. Well, I think it's, it's fear more than anything. I do think that when it's that time period, you, you personalize it. You personalize because what if you are, you know, you're, you're John and mm -hmm. what if you have a son? And yes. Yeah, yeah. It becomes you know? extremely emotional. Yeah. So, and, I mean, yeah, sure. I, I remember mom ta talking about, I think it was the night stalker. And was it the night stalker in, in the city? Oh, um, and, uh, and, uh, that was, uh, uh, Berkowitz. Or son of Sam. It was son, son of Sam. Sam. Son of Sam. And, yeah. David and, she, and she said, she goes, it was terrible. And, and we had to, there were curfews and they had to be home at a certain time. And you know, it was, it was scary to walk the streets and yeah. personalize it so much because you know, the chances of it being you, I mean, yeah, he had, he had maybe 50 victims, let's say, I mean, not documented, it's 45. So he had 45 victims, but out of the population of where he was located, the chances are low that you would be the victim, but mm -hmm. still you personalize it because it's right there. And David Berkowitz had 45 victims. No, I'm sorry. I was going back to Gacy. Gacy. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Gacy. Okay. Yeah, Gacy yeah. had, okay. The chances they estimate 45. They know of 33. They know if they're through. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so yeah. So I, you know, you personalize it. And I could see that. I totally could understand that. So yeah. that fear, it's like, get rid of it. Get rid of that, that deviant, that, that yeah. monster. Yeah. So yes. I don't have to be so scared anymore. I could, uh, I could totally see that. It's yeah. Kind of, it's refreshing to, to people to know he's yeah. gone. There's no chance he can get out. There's no, you know, there's, there's no right, player right, right, in the world yeah, to help yeah. him. He right. is out and we can live knowing that, you know, so. I, yeah. I, and, I, and I would, I would listen. And if I were in those people's, uh, if I, if I lived in Chicago and I, during that time, and I had a 16 year old son and then I found out that G Gacy was doing these things, I would be happy when he was dead as well. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, the point I was trying to make, it was just that, uh, It just, it, 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 it's, I wouldn't, the point I was trying to make is to, to you know, with the people that go and cheer, um, uh, it seems, it seems like, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it seems like primitive behavior. Yeah. yeah. You know, like uh, if you've ever seen um, Braveheart yeah. at the end when they're torturing Mel Gibson and the crowd is cheering there, yeah. yeah yeah you know and that's what it kind of uh seems like yeah um uh, right because obviously you know uh gibson was painted as a villain mm -hmm. in england mm -hmm. and whatnot look at um, jesus look yeah at jesus. right exactly that's exactly like, what i mean yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah well, you watch a ufc fight and before covid there was you know twenty five thousand screaming fans in the audience you know yeah and, you know and it beating the hell out of each other so it seems like, you know, that there was a little bit of that uh, behavior. Whereas when we watched, when we did uh, Dahmer, the audience during the trial were actually members of the family or the person of, of the children that were killed, which is kind of understandable, you know? Yeah. Not that either way, either one is not understandable. All I'm saying is it's both understandable. Yeah. 
It's just that people don't change. No. You're still a primitive human being. You're still an animal, right? Yeah. So on and so forth. And uh, uh, people don't, uh, people don't, some are maybe sophisticated, but the majority of them, you know, an eye for an eye. You I know? think it's kind of to your personal trait of like how emotional you are. You know, how emotional are you? So if, yeah. you know, I would consider myself not that emotional. I don't, you know, I don't cry all the time. Yeah, you're a cold so, bitch. Yeah, I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't think I'm that type to, and I don't know, maybe, and maybe I can't say that for myself. And it's good for people to maybe evaluate this. So they watch this sure, and think, what sure. person am I? Would I be the one cheering? Yeah. Or would I be the one watching on TV saying, all right, He's gone. Satisfied. Good. Right. Good nice right, society. right. You're not a cold bitch, by the way. That was a, that was a joke. No. You're, actually, you're actually very warm. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I think people, it just goes to, it just taught, you know, who they are as an emotional person. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, people are just like, there are people who are out there and it's like those people who, you know, will go and protest and they are super emotional when they do it. It's the same kind of people, I think, that I can understand. Know, are just go go out there protesting and that's they're not satisfied until that person is gone right, right others right. that would just sit back and say i feel the same way but i'm just gonna sit back and yeah like, yeah, oh. yeah I, I agree it depends on the person you are yeah absolutely you're, you're yeah right. yeah and and then again it could be di so uh larry nassar he was the physical therapist for the girls gymnastics and he was molesting the gymnast you remember him he's the physical yes 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 during the court during the the trial one of the fathers got loose and went after him and they had to hold him back i always always said let him go. Let him. Let him I, oh, go. I always said, how does he get? How does how does somebody like that? How do certain priests that do the same thing? How do they get away without an ass whipping? Yeah. I don't understand how a father could just go. Oh, all right. Well, let's wait till the trial. You know what I mean? Like and, that. I forget whose father it was. I mean, but they 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 had to get him and hold him back. And I'm thinking, can't they just look away for five minutes? Yeah, just just five minutes. Yeah. Let let I don't know. That's I mean, street justice, if you think about it. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is street justice. But, yeah. And I don't understand how more people don't get it like that. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't. There has, or even you know, the girls with uh with the uh, what's his name. Uh, who is the singer that had all the uh, underage girls travel with him? What's his name? Oh, Kelly. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Those stories were gross. <laughs> yeah. How did Oh, Kelly not get an ass with him? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't. And it, would, it sucks because then they, they wind up in solitary and like, or, or whatever it is. They don't end up in general pop and it's like, yeah. damn it. Well, like, Dahmer did. Da yeah. Yeah, yes. Dahmer did. And he, he got it. He got it. Good. <laughs> he did. He <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I always like, I can't, you know, when you hear the stories of the priests and I'm like, white collar or no white collar, somebody had to get their ass kicked. It had to happen, you know, um, or, 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 or the doc, or even uh, Sandusky, right? Oh, you know, God. how did he not get an ass kicked? It's just, un I don't know. Oh my God. And I don't, I don't those poor babies they were not only molested by him and that they were pimped and it was just... yeah I, I don't i don't know how somebody could get away without you know uh, just getting a good one in like not, not you know like uh you know i could see a father of one of the victims just hiding out with a pistol yeah and i could understand it never mind getting punched in the face but those things never seem to happen. It's it's strange. I don't understand. I don't understand. Maybe times yeah. have changed. Men have changed. I don't. I don't know. I call that. I remember watching a documentary where oh, I think a woman killed. I forget who it was. It her husband when she found out he was molesting their kid. I forget what it was, and she actually got off because they called it. Um, oh God, I forget what the word is. But basically, she didn't plan on it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in the right state of mind and they were able to prove it and she got off, which right. and, and never, <laughs> you know, yeah, and I could, uh, and I could totally, you know, understand it. I could completely. Look at Lorraine and Bobbitt. Like, watch yeah. that. Yeah. Watch yeah. That story. It's a great story. Is it really? Yeah. Really good. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you have those different type of people, those emotional people. Um, 
to personalize and just run with their emotions. And then you have others who are just like, yeah, good justice, you know, and yeah. either way, it doesn't make you a bad person either way. You are who you are. Right, 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 right. You know, it's how you act on it, which then. Mm -hmm. So now, life. so now John Wayne Gacy, after uh, this whole uh, thing, he became, he becomes a household name, right? Yeah. And he becomes somewhat of a celebrity. And there are some characters in books and stories and movies that are based on him, right? And I think one yeah. was Stephen King's It, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. I yeah. didn't even think of that. I didn't even, I, I was reading that there were like movies somewhat based on him, but I didn't. Yeah. Even... And uh, Pennywise, Pennywise was based yeah. on, was based on him. Yeah. And um, further down the road, uh, American Horror Story, I think it was season I did not, you know, do four. I have to watch that? Because I've never watched any of those. Oh, well, the, yeah, some of them are really, really good. Especially, yeah. the, especially the ones with, uh, what's her name in it? That actress, because she, what is her name? She's the, oh God, what the hell is her name? I'm gonna, okay. Now I'm gonna use. Share screen. Yeah, how, what is her name? She was Okay, so what's she good. from? What's she from? Tell me first. Besides American Horror Story. I can do um, this. I've played this game with my husband all the time. Okay, um, before I look it up, uh, she was in the remake of uh, Cape Fear. She was the wife. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Fine, look it up. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, she was also in the remake. Juliet of, Lewis is the daughter. Yeah, the uh, uh, Jessica, Jessica Lang. Lang. Jessica Lang. Lang. Yes. Th there she is, Jessica Lang. Yep. Um, so good. She, yeah, she is just an amazing actress. She was also in. Um, I mean, so good that when she leaves the show, it loses something. Really. Yeah, and it, it's really she, and they actually brought her back two seasons later for a short period of time. And when you watch the show, um, with the cameo that she does, well, it's a little bit more than a cameo. It's a couple of scenes. Yeah. She's, she just, she's, she's better than anybody in the entire season. And that wow. little bit, it's supposed to be that she is, there's a season, she comes back after, I think it's season six, she comes back or seven, I'm not sure. And she's supposed to be the, the mother of, the Antichrist, but she doesn't know it. And um, then she she finds out that it's the Antichrist. Like Damien. Yeah, she finds <laughs> out, but he doesn't even know he's the Antichrist at this point. She finds out he's the Antichrist. And there's this whole, there's this whole speech that she does before she kicks him out of the house. And it is like, yeah. like when you listen to her and you watch her, she is, you know what she is? She's a throwback to the old school 19... 40s 1950s actresses where the, everything was emotion and um you could you could feel the emotion through the screen with her you know it, yeah. it, she's just fantastic i don't know why but after she left after season four they tried to replace her with lady gaga in season five and that was that didn't go well at all yeah that, that's out that, that's some that, big shoes to fill yeah that was that was a horrible season anyway uh but yeah no good good show definitely a good show okay that was actually really cool that was actually a really yeah. good one that yeah. was a, a really good one you know jeffrey dahmer made me a little uh, uh nauseous but <laughs> yeah, this one well, we didn't get too detailed i don't think there are many like well, well it, it seems to be cut and dry with him it seems to be it's uh, fun yeah yeah that's right that's right it seems to be you know uh some type of torture rape yeah. And then uh, killing, and then he would go and do it again. Uh, uh, but the torture would be basically, like you said, sitting on his chest or beating him or strangling him or so on and so forth until yeah. he gets what he wants. And then once he gets what he wants, which is basically submission of him uh, having sex with them of one way or another, and then he kills them and puts them in their basement and then goes and gets another one. And it, I mean, you could you could go really deep into saying that. Um, he's inflicting the same pain he went through. Yes, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. But he got uh, sexual gratification from it. Yeah. Which, yeah, which is obviously really common, which is like uh, the, only, the only serial killer that we've covered that didn't get sexual gratification was Eileen Wernos. Mm -hmm. You know? She's more of a survivor. She was doing it to survive. It's, it, I mean, yeah. it was the most maladaptive way to try and survive, but 
that's what she was she was doing she was you know killing these guys robbing them mm -hmm. um taking out using the guys that were hiring her you know yeah because if she were to have sex with them first and then kill them then it would be like oh well this she's some kind of sexual deviant but mm -hmm. she would she would like like they were gonna lure them. Yeah, yeah she would lure them in before having sex and then killing them yeah, she, yeah. And it yeah. was just basically just shooting them in the chest and whatnot. Yeah. What, yeah, the, what a boring true. serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. Thank you again. This one was really great. I, no uh, thank again, you. I really appreciate it. Christmas oh, gift. Oh, and I like your microphone. Check it out. Yeah, thanks for my Christmas gift. <laughs> See, when you bring it close to your mouth, I can hear you even clearer. Oh, so I do. Next, okay, so, you know, people tell me I'm a loud talker, so I'm surprised I even needed this close to my mouth. Yeah, well. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it works really good, so. Oh, okay, good. All right, listen, thank you again. And serious no and problem. silliness, uh, this is another episode or volume, if you will, of uh, Serial Killer. This one was with John Wayne Gacy, the, the clown killer. Please. Snowed in with a serial, serial killer. That's, that's right, killer. snowed in with a serial killer. Oh, that's what, yeah. we're gonna, that's what we're gonna make it, snowed in with a serial killer. Okay, okay. got it. <laughs> and um, so uh, uh, like, subscribe, share. Please uh, share it with people who are also serial killer fans. Yes. And thank you once again, Dr. Maria Beagle. I'm just saying, doctor, because it's, it's, soon, it's inevitable. Soon, it's inevitable. hopefully soon. It's going to happen. Thank you again. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.